class now. Just a second. Okay, everybody, welcome to the day three of Gmail. This is Wednesday, March 26th. It's a beautiful day in Las Vegas, other than being cold and windy. Oh, uh, Rob tells us that there's supposed to be 50 mile an hour winds here today. So that means that's enough wind speed to lift the dust and sand off the ground. So that could be dust storms. Anyway, um, today we're going to talk about creating events, which is connecting your Gmail with your calendar. But since we just watched the video on contacts, I want to talk about that for a second. But I want to open it up. Does anybody have any questions about that video we just watched? The Ants and Alexander video. Number no nine. questions in Santa Fe Springs. Okay, no questions in Santa Fe Springs. We have uh, three new people in the class. Two of them are here today. What's Dodie's thing? What is, why is Dodie starting next week? Or oh, coming back next week? She has to uh, train somebody to do Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, so we have three new students so far this week. And might there be someone else from Salvation Army? Yeah, Jamie. Jamie, okay, good. So anyway, um, <clears throat> as I explained to them and anybody else that's new in Santa Fe Springs, if you don't know what's going on, don't worry about it. Try to figure it out on your own by doing the tutorials. Ask the person next to you. Ask somebody else. Ask staff. We use the Navy SEALs learn one, do one, teach one approach. And um, you learn the most when you're teaching someone else, so it's in everyone's best interest. Also, it's important that when you go to work, one of the ways and things that you do to get the position is to stress to your employer that you can help <clears throat> them get to the cloud and you can help the other employees learn how to do these things. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> as a starting point in picking up from that tutorial, having contacts is vital these days. The more contacts you have and the more you're able to contact your contacts, the more value you will have. So does anybody remember how you get email addresses, how you receive email addresses in Gmail? It's a really simple question. How do you receive emails in, in Gmail? How do you receive email addresses in email? Gmail. Well, someone emails you. Correct. When somebody sends you an email. Okay. Sort of a trick question. But you can't overthink the question. Just, you know, when you get to tests or when you're in your interview, just answer the questions they ask you. Don't think more into it. The way we get email addresses in, in email or in Gmail is somebody sends us an email. Okay. Now, what happens when we get an email? How do we, how do we save that? Do you remember, Dave? Go to your inbox. Okay. Now, just go to any email and open it up. Okay. So, who's that from? Calvin. Okay. So now, if you Go put your cursor over on the left, your pointer over near where Calvin's picture is. Over there somewhere, yeah. a box is going to open up. Uh -huh. Okay? And that box in the bottom, it says, what does it say, Anna? Contact info. Okay, so it says contact. So if you click on contact, it brings you to your contacts page, and now you can fill in information of who that is. You can fill it. You can add more to it. And what are some of the blank sections, Anna? Um, the home number, the email number, mobile number, the phone number, and the address. Okay. What's the other blank ones down at the bottom? This one is birthday. Birthday URL. and URL. So there's things that you can add. What about groups? Is there anything about in there on? Adding them to a group? Um, yeah, my circles. Are okay, so you can add them to circles, but this video here shows, and if we look at the, the big screen here, it shows this 
here, this little group button. It kind of looks like a an animal paw to me. Um, and that's you can add people to groups. So it's very important in your careers to collect as many email uh, as many email addresses as you can. However, just having the address isn't really good enough. You need to be able to reach out to the people that are pertinent, that are relevant to, to what the message you want to give is. Sometimes you might want to send something to everybody on your contact list. I can't think of an example of when you would want to send it to everybody. I think I have like 800 names on my um, in my contact list just that I've accumulated over the last 10 years. Um, it's hard to find things if you don't have this filled out right, but it's very easy to find things if you do have your contacts filled out right and you put people into groups. So close that box go and go to um, your main contacts window. So there you go, Anna. Right. Okay. Now you notice at the top, right above the people's names, there is a, what is that symbol? Is that the group symbol? Yeah. Um or is that okay? And what's the next one? Or and what is that? Export, print, find, and merge duplicates, restore contacts, sort by first name or last name. Okay. All right. The group that actually click on somebody. Okay. So as Dave just said, now to get to the group button, if you click on one of the names in your, or click on the the arrow box next to the name, now you can add people to groups. And what are the default groups? So why don't you do that, Anna? Put the check mark over on the left to somebody's name. Okay. 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 Now go up to the, to the right side of that. Open it up. And so Anna has a lot of groups. Are those your circles? Um, I have child tutoring emails and employer emails, friends, and I have. Um, yeah, then I do have my groups like the school, LA, Las Vegas, Las Vegas staff. Okay, are yours, Dave, your group and circles that you have? Yeah, it looks like like whatever circle that that person you click on is in mm -hmm. pops up right there. Okay. And is there a choice at the bottom to create new? Yeah. Okay, so you can create a new a new group. This becomes very important when you want to send a mass email or an email out to more than one person or to a lot of people is if those people are in groups all you need to do is send it to the group and it will send it to everyone and what else did we see in the video about groups if you select a group how does it uh, appear on the screen in your email does anybody know in Santa Fe Springs so if you want to send it to a group what happens you have an email, you want to send it to a group. Well, it sends it to everyone in that group. It sends it to everyone in the group, but it lists them individually. Right. And, you and that enables you to do what? Enables you to, uh, you, can, you can edit that, you can send it to, you can copy it, you can CC somebody, or you can send it out. Exactly, exactly. You have flexibility that there might be some people in the group you want don't want to send it to. What was the example that Anson gave about that? Uh, you can just go in and um, you can uh, you can just delete that person. You just yeah, that, but what what was the example he gave of why you might want to? Like a birthday. If right, exactly. Birthday. Somebody right. in that group. That's right. It's your family. It's a family event. There's a birthday, a surprise party. You don't want the... the um, person who has the birthday to know that there's this party. So you send it to the group or you, you, you don't send it. You have it be sent to the group, but you then delete that person. Okay? So it doesn't go to them. Now what about why would you CC or BCC somebody that's in a group? Anybody? Angel? Why would you move somebody in a group down to the CC section? I don't know. Because if they're in the group, they're going to get the email anyway. So if 
Okay, so what is the good business etiquette for CC and BCC? When do you CC somebody? Or why do you CC somebody? Well, have a copy of the email that you Okay, why do you want them to have a copy? So once they see it. What was that, Patricia? No, someone was asking me what BCC meant. Okay. Okay, so why would we add somebody to a CC as opposed to just send it to them? What's the distinction? What differentiates the two? Oh, the BCC, uh, only the sender can see it. No, he said CC. We, we haven't gotten to BCC yet. We're still on CC. Oh. Spanish. It's like... Yes, yes. Right? <laughs> Okay, why do we CC somebody? What is the dis why not just put them in the two section? It's another one of these simple, simple things. Everybody knows this. Why do we CC somebody? Okay, but why don't we put them in the two section? So everybody can see them. No, why don't why aren't they in the two section? Why do we move them to CC? They're just receiving a copy. They don't have to reply. Right, but why don't you put me in the two section? Why don't you say to Anna and to Ed? Because every time, like. You know, something, and I send out an email to that person, you get a copy of it too after that. Nope. <laughs> but why do you CC? Okay, it's very simple. When you send it to someone else, when you CC someone, and if you receive a CC, you should take it as it's information only. You're not expected to do anything with it. So if you're going to send something to somebody and you put them in the CC section, you really can't go back to them and say, well, I sent you an email. Why didn't you do anything? Because you CC'd me. I thought you were just sending it to me so I know, not so that I do something. Okay? So when so the, the, the proper etiquette, best business practices, the reason you CC someone as opposed to putting them in the, in the two line is because this is just information for them. You just want to keep them up to speed, in the loop, whatever. You don't want to have to explain it to them later, but you're not expecting them to do anything. And you want the person you're sending it to to know that the other person knows what's going on. Oh, okay. Now, why do we BCC someone? And I, we already know that if you are BCC'd, the person who it's to isn't going to know that it was sent to you. Why do we BCC things? Keep it private. What? Keep it private, only the sender can see it. Well, we know that, but why do we do that? Okay, well, let's start with an easier one. <clears throat> when is a good example of when to do that? When is it a good example to, to BCC people? Okay, but what's an example? Like when? Okay, and so, so what would be <clears throat> your manager did? But why didn't you want the person, the recipient, to know that it was going to? Your Maybe you didn't want them to go around you. But why BC instead of CC? Your boss knows? Yeah. Okay. And why wouldn't you want them to know your boss knows? Go around you? Okay. Okay, so that would be here's a good reason to use BCC, and here's a time you should always do it. When your recipients don't necessarily want their email shared with other people. Okay? Maybe your recipients don't want other people knowing their email. 
right? Have you ever been in that situation? So an example of that would be, let's say you're on a mailing list for a radio station or something. And this mailing list has 100 names on it. If you are put in the to or the CC section, guess who now has your, your email address? All 100 of those people. And guess whose email addresses you now have? Those 100 people. Those 100 people. Now that could be a positive thing, depending upon who that list is, right? Yeah. But usually it's not. So under etiquette and courtesy and best practices, we BCC, we, we BCC, one reason we BCC is we don't want the recipient's email addresses to go out to third parties. You know, I don't want to share my mailing list with you. This is my list. I'm just not going to give it up. It took me time to build this thing. And some of the people on my list might not want me to distribute their email addresses to third parties. Okay, that's a reason. You know, the obvious reason that we all know of is secrecy. Uh, I don't want the recipient knowing who else is getting it. Right. Okay? But the business practice reason would be the recipients might not want to share their email address with everybody else that's getting it. Okay? Now, for our purposes, it would usually be considered a good thing if you capture 100 more or 10 more. The more email addresses you have in your contact list, the better it is. You should always strive to do it. But what you have to do, and a note I put on the board, is you have to go through your inbox. You have to do the exercise that's on that training video or that tutoring tutorial. Um, go through your contacts or go through your inbox, add these people to contacts, add them to circles, invite them to communities, do things. So think of it like uh, your think of your social network like a net, like it's a fishing net. Okay. Now, what if you're um, how big do the Openings in the net have to be if you're catching dolphin. Troy, how big can the opening? They can be pretty big, right? Because a dolphin is big. Okay. How many minnows are you going to catch in that net? None. Right. You're not going to catch any in that net. So now what happens if you have a net and it's got the right size, you're trying to catch minnows, but there's a big tear in your net? What happens? They're all going to get out. So think of your contact list as your net. It's not enough just to have, you know, what's a net made of? Let's say rope, string. Okay? It's not good enough just to have a bunch of string and say it's a net. you got to put it together in a way that it can collect the, whatever it is you're looking for. You know, fish, here it's people's names. And then you have to be able to screen out the stuff you don't want, right? So let's say you don't have a net. You're trying to use a big bucket. Does it work? Fetching minnows? Why not? Because there's no flow. Correct. Things don't go through it, right? You gotta, you've got got to filter or to keep the things you want and don't keep the things you, want, you don't want. Now, if you have a net that's designed to catch minnows, can you catch a dolphin? Why? Because there's still a net. There's a net, and the dolphin can't get through the holes in the net. Water can get through, other stuff can get through, but a dolphin can't get through. Think of your contact list as your net, and you have to maintain your net. You know, it's not good enough just to, to have all uh, your inbox that has all of these emails. Now, if you have an inbox, and you got an email two years ago from Goodwill Industries, how do you find it in Gmail? Ravon, how do you find it in Gmail? Inbox. Yeah, You're in the inbox. How do you find it? You've got a thousand emails. You're looking for the one from Goodwill. Search, for search. search right. You, you yeah. put it in that search window right at the top of your page there. Okay? That's one way to do it. It's not an efficient way to do it. The efficient way to do it is you add that person to your contacts, you put them in a group, then you also put them in a circle, and if possible, you invite them to one or more communities. 
then every time you want to distribute information or request information, it's easy to get to those, those people. Okay? So the take home from this talk up to this point is your contact list is vital. Your contact list is everything. It's the number one neglected thing of people that have emails is they do not maintain their, their contact list. And part of the problem is, like in my case, once you have 800 names in it, it's kind of daunting to think about having to go in and fix that net. You just have to have discipline and set aside 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, instead of playing solitaire or What's that game you play, Trevon? Okay. I don't play a game. <laughs> I wish I could. I listen okay. to music. So instead of playing a game, if you were going to play a game, what game would you play? Dennis, what chess. game would you play? Okay, chess. Dennis, what would you play? Uh, I like chess as well. You play what? Chess. Chess, okay. So instead of playing chess, one day... Go through and clean up your contact list or start cleaning it up and just make a conscious effort that every new inbox email I get in my inbox at the end of the day or the start of the day or when I get home or whatever, I'm just going to go through my inbox and make sure to add all new emails that I get, add that person to my contact list. And we saw how easy it was, right? It's very easy to do that. So. Okay, does anybody have any questions about contacts or the importance of contacts? Roy, anything? Okay. So, you know, we're, we're not, purpose of this is to get you to see the importance and to learn. Things like this are not taught. We can only help guide you and show you the importance of things. Okay, no, anything in uh, Santa, uh, Long Beach, Stephanie? Stephanie is muted. Anything there, Stephanie? Okay, we will move on. Okay, so now we're going to talk about creating events. And I'm going to switch over to my... Um, to my email. Okay, so my email is on the screen now. And let's see. So just as a, a point of reference over here, it says I have 4,635 emails in my inbox. Uh, so I have a lot, but what we're going to talk about today is creating an event. So let's look at, let's go to this email right here. So you open the email. Yesterday we had a meeting with the people from the downtown project. Uh, Sherry had the meeting, she set up the meeting, had a meeting with the people from the downtown project that deal with the homeless uh, support. So we met with them and then we started talking about our People of the Abyss project. So I sent an email to the guy about what we're doing and what we'd like to do, collaborate, and he said, sounds awesome. And he threw it out there, not sure how I can help. So, but that just opens the door for us to tell him how he can help because after all the idea sounds awesome. So. Probably whatever we tell him, as long as it makes sense, he's going to do. Right? Because it sounds awesome. So, um, but let's say I want to create an event. I got this email. Now we need to do something about it. So, how do I create an event? Who in Santa Fe Springs can tell me how I create an event? I'll give you a hint. The answer is in your Google Plus. Description for today's class. How do I create an event for this? 
Yeah. What? Calendar. Gotta speak up. We didn't hear you. No, it said go to the calendar. Okay, no, that's not what we do. That's what we could do, but that's not the best thing to do. Anybody else? Okay. This will be one of the most important things that you can do to make best use of your time. Rosemary said click on more. Okay, click on more. Which I just did. Uh -huh. Now what? Create event. Go down to create event. On the Google Plus? No, on your Gmail. Okay, so now that now loads my calendar. But check this out. So not only does it load my calendar and starts creating an event, down here in the description section, it copies the email in there so I know what it said. Right. And then over here on the right, it adds the emails the email addresses of everybody who was involved in that thread. Okay, so what do I do to create the event? Put the time we start the at the top. I put in a heading, a title for it. So this would be, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, invisible people? Invisible people. Uh, people private. Okay, and then I put in the date that I want to have the follow-up occur. Let's say it's today. Now I can put in a time right here, but if I don't know when, let's say it's just a task I want to do, I click all day. Okay, this this is a will end up being like a task thing, and when we get to calendar, this will make more sense. Now, what I'm going to do before I forget is I'm going to delete most of these people off of this event. Okay, so where is the event? I don't know. I'll just say here. You will want to make it a video call. I do, I click that. What calendar do I want this to go to? Okay, well, this is going to go to my personal calendar. I can change it, I can edit it once it's done. Is there any stuff in here I want to take out? Um, so I'm going to leave a couple lines in here. So I would do that. I would tighten it up. Then maybe down below, I put some notes. So this is just my shorthand thing to know. Or I might say notes. The goal is to work with him to set up micro campuses and shelters. I put whatever notes I want. Now let's say I put an address in here. Let's say I say I'm going to meet him at Goodwill. Okay. I do I want to add any other guests? No. Anything else I want to do? Do I want to add an attachment? Let's say I do want to add an attachment. Let's say I want to add a, what's the document we created, Rob? Presentation? And no student left behind or something? Yeah, let's say I want to add this document. Okay, I check it over. Looks like it's complete. I then save it. 
says, do you want to invite external guests? Yeah, I want Rob to know what's going on. Okay. So now it takes me to my calendar, and guess what's right here? This is the event right here. It's up at the top. It's all day. So if yeah, so so the all day works to be like your to-do list. Think of the all day button as a to-do list. You can turn this into your task list, the to-do list, instead of going creating going to the task list function in Gmail, you can use calendar so every day you see the tasks you're supposed to do. Well, let's say later today we decide I don't have time to do it, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Then I just drag it over to tomorrow. But I'm just, right then I said I don't want to let Rob know about that. Or I could drag it to any other day. Or let's say I have additional information, I click on it, I open it up, and now that it's opened up, now that I'm editing it, I can move it to any other calendar that I would like it to be on. And then I save it. And then I can delete it from here if I wanted to. I can remove it from my personal calendar. So to recap, we received an email. I want to follow up on that email, but I don't want to just send the guy an email right now. I want to follow up and have actually do something. So I create an event. That opens the calendar. And now it's on my calendar. I've also sent an email to Rob about the event, notifying him about the event. When the event is going to occur, I get a reminder in advance. Just open the event. So down here, if I want to add a reminder, I can have it pop up, and I can set how to get it, email, pop up, how many minutes, hours, days, or weeks in advance. Okay, so you have a lot of control. <coughs> what this does is this is a very powerful tool that gives a lot of control so you don't let things drop, you don't forget to do things, and you can actually do a lot more stuff. And the benefit of that is you become the person at work who makes things happen, who gets things done, who's the most proactive person there. OK? So let's do an exercise. Let's have everybody create an event. Yes, Angel. With, um, Flourish, we couldn't create, create an event. It, was in, but it doesn't give them the option to. We well, have to go to the More button. Yeah. I did. Uh, go, to, go to Google Plus and try it. Go to uh, your Google Plus page and try the events with that. Just if you gave them the option to create a task, um, filter messages and stuff. Okay. Now, that brings up a very important thing. Everybody needs to know the most important error code in when dealing with computers, and what is that error code? What is that error code? What's the error code? There is an error code that you need to know when it comes to computers. Most people run into this error code. It doesn't always show up on the screen. No? Right. It doesn't always show up on the screen, but the error code is the ID and T code. Okay? Okay? Has anybody seen that before? <laughs> Troy, have you seen it? Okay, so we all experience that code. And um, this occurs when there's 15 things you're supposed to do, and you do 14 of them, and it doesn't work. And then you think there's something wrong with the system. Okay? 
when that occurs, you need to take a step back and say, well, wait a second. If this was really a problem, in this case, Google wouldn't exist because everybody would have said, this thing doesn't work. I'm not going to use Google anymore, and they would have quit. So where is something wrong? Now, yesterday we experienced it with an email, getting an email, uh, a Larson Gladius email set up here. It was very frustrating until we looked very closely. And what did we find, Stacy? We forgot to put .com at the rest of it. So we had the name at Larson Gladius. And we kept sending emails out to that, and they kept getting rejected. And we couldn't figure out. It took how long, 20 minutes? Okay, it took a long time for us to figure out what was wrong, and we were sure something was wrong with Google. It wasn't working. Okay. Now, you have to be in your inbox. This is an email that you have received. Does anybody here in this row, front row, have the inability to find the create event out of the pushing the more button. Select an email, open an email, don't select, open the email. Trevon? I one, but I didn't add people. I sent it to Rob and Dave and behind my invitation. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you have to be in Gmail. You have to be in your inbox. You have to have an email open. Okay, that's what you have to do. So we're going to look at Troy's thing in a second and see what it is. Um, I have a feeling it's just one of those very subtle things that are the learning experiences for doing them. Does anybody here in Las Vegas have any other questions? Donna? Okay, you kind of look like you had a question. Okay. Does anybody else not have the create event button? Link. I would say yes, because she's in it. Okay. So now, does anybody in California have any questions for today? Okay, I sound like no questions. So the important takeaways for today, once again, Gmail is the Google app that you will probably use the most. It is not the most powerful tool. It is a very, very, very useful tool, especially when you use it in as a professional, as opposed to just a casual person, an amateur person who just wants to you know, communicate information back and forth. It's a very powerful tool. Also, we'll talk about tomorrow how Gmail, um, tomorrow we'll talk about how Gmail interacts with the other seven Google apps that we will, uh, that we work on here. Okay. Once again, any questions in California? No, no questions. Okay, great. Well, thank you, everyone. The important thing is to go practice this. You will forget 70% of what we do today if you do not review it. But the good news is this is on YouTube, so you can always go back and watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.